What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jobbers and Goons. We keep it short on intros now. Like, subscribe if you support the content. We're almost at, I think, 23K. We're on the road to 30K. It'd be amazing if you could join. Today's video, it is on Mortal Kombat. The new game just came out. We are going to discuss how Mortal Kombat scales. We're going to talk about some of the top tiers in the verse and just how powerful they can be. Shout out to my boy GB, my lawyer GB helped me gather this information and make sure it's all in order. I'm going to present it in the best way I believe possible. I hope you guys enjoy this and if you're a fan of MK content, you're a fan of power scaling in general, comics, all that, you should stick around a while. I drop content consistently and if you run the likes up, I'll do more MK content. But without further ado, let's begin. First to talk about is the Elder Gods and Gods and kind of their scaling relative to the rest of the verse and where it all comes together for that section now in mortal kombat we learn gods like raiden are beyond the effects of time manipulation their fate is decided and shaped by their own independent action cetrion the elder goddess does indeed confirm this in the games the place or the original spawning spot or where the elder gods exist and come from is beyond the realms, all of the realms, and it is in a void. We learn this during the ending of Onaga in Deception, where he defeats the Elder Gods in the void beyond all of reality. Throughout Mortal Kombat, there are many examples of Raiden, who obviously is one of the most prominent gods, gods seen within the verse. Many examples of him defying destiny, purpose, fate, or his role in the cosmic landscape. We see times where he remembers past lives, even other timelines outside of his own, which kind of lends credence to how deep the Elder God's powers go when it comes to mortal concepts like time and space. Now, funny enough, Elder Gods such as Cetrion are powerful enough that it took multiple characters just to hang with her and put her down. This includes Fusion, Nightwolf, Shang Tsung, Jax, and Sendell. All of these characters are more than capable of killing top tiers in the verse. Kronika herself tells her daughter Cetrion to be very careful with Sendell, as she is one of the mortals who can harm even the Elder God. I will elaborate a little later why it's kind of important to consider all the beings, not just gods and elder gods, when it comes to power scaling based on how the game and the lore works. When Liu Kang became a god through Raiden, gifting him power, it's revealed his godhood protected him from the hourglass, which we know controls all of creation in every single timeline. Kronika says Liu Kang godhood can't match up to an elder god like Cetrion. But, and this is why it's important to consider all beings, this is proven false, not only by the defeat of Cetrion at the hands of Liu Kang, but the following defeat of Kronika, hands of God of Fire Liu Kang. These titles of demigods, gods, elder gods, and titans seems to be just that, titles. As there are many ways for one to scale to these characters in the verse, whether or not they are using artifacts, or a combination of powers from different warriors. No power level is safe or absolute in Mortal Kombat. We really just have power levels we know they can reach. The one true being, the true god, a title was granted to Onaga at one point. The god of before gods to some of his worshipers is a powerful being that is the Mortal Kombat universe itself. A consciousness that was split into many realms that create the Mortal Kombat universe. Even this level of power can be reached within verse with proper prep. Next for us to talk about are the Titans. Now, who are the Titans as opposed to being gods or elder gods or grouping them together with those? Well, to keep it simple, our first look at what a Titan actually is in verse and how powerful they can be came in Mortal Kombat 11 with Kronika. She makes light of Liu Kang, who at this point had achieved godhood via Raiden's own power. Kronika herself says she can control and execute control over timelines to erase universes entirely. Now, this isn't as simple as just erasing one universe at that time. She would be erasing 
past, present, and even futures all together. She used her power to sculpt the sands of time. Now, what are the sands of time and what does reading something like that mean? Well, the sands of time, when sculpted, provides and gives power over all timelines. The crown she wears also provides her with strength, so much so that anyone who is in possession of it would become her equal. And this, in turn, would put them on the level of a titan and even make them a titan themselves. Transitioning from Mortal Kombat 11, let's take a look at Mortal Kombat 1. We see the new timeline is threatened by who they believe is a revived Kronika. Garas lays his worries to rest and lays the worries of the return to rest by assuring that destroyed titans cannot return. Here's another interesting fact about the Titans. We learned that Titan Chang from the Mortal Kombat 11 timeline survived and he is in Mortal Kombat 1. He says the energy released from the battle with Liu Kang created two timelines. In one timeline, Chang won. In the other, Liu Kang won. This cements that latter endings are still canon to Mortal Kombat which we will see more proof of later on. Liu Kang summons Titan Katana and explains to her why he is a keeper of time or a Titan, which also and also allows him to quickly explain how the amount of possible time Titans are actually endless as the timelines have been split by the endless possibilities. So essentially you have endless potential for Titans as well given the chaos of endless possibilities. We see even among the titans gathered are Titan Kung Lao and Titan Raiden, whose ending we saw back in Mortal Kombat 11. So they do indeed survive and make their endings canon. In preparation for his final battle against Titan Liu Kang, we see Titan Shang Tsung summon a massive interdimensional portal, which we can safely assume and reach various timelines given his titan powers. We see multiple fighters, possible titans, emerge from said portal. In a post credit scene, we see Titan Havoc appear. It seems he was pleased by the Armageddon battle between titans, but wanted more chaos. He tells us there will be another one, which lets us know the timelines are indeed still expanding and growing. We know from Mortal Kombat 1 that it's possible to defeat a Titan without exactly being one. In other words, characters can and do scale to Titans. One such character is Onaga. Titan Liu Kang confirms this fact. In closing, a Titan like Kronika can do everything we have seen here and much more, with complete control over time and timelines and the power to reach even beyond space-time on a multiversal scale, it's safe to say these are the strongest characters in the verse in uh, Mortal Kombat. Now, let's talk about some other interesting notes with the Titans. The invasion game mode highlights threats to timelines that Liu Kang seeks to snuff out. For the first threat, we have Scorpion. These characters in particular can possibly scale to Titans as they threaten timelines directly. Titan Liu Kang can be seen opening up portals and summoning black holes with a snap of his finger. While he can resist the power of a black hole with ease, his opponents cannot. Garros was created by Kronika forever, adapting after each death and becoming stronger than before. He is repurposed by Liu Kang to be a protector of timelines. We see in his fatality he can open portals through time put his enemies in an infinite death loop. Garros becomes a keeper of time, and Liu Kang describes him to be perfect, as he is tireless and fit for this kind of responsibility. Rico in his ending reveals to us that Onaga is alive and trapped, sealed in a mountain by Shao Kahn's ancestors. He goes to this mountain to take the Dragon King on, knowing he would most likely die. Shao Kahn describes Reiko as the perfect soldier. Few are as well versed in the war and the art of war as he is within his own verse. 
In a latter ending of Mortal Kombat 11, we see Titan Shao Kahn has merged billions of timelines, and he rules them all through the tournament of Mortal Kombat. This goes far beyond what other Titans have done, as usually they rule over one timeline universe. We see Shang Tsung tried to merge two timelines and it ended up as an Armageddon. The fact Titan Shao Kahn managed to merge billions is absolute insanity. Now, how strong do I think the big bosses of Mortal Kombat or the strongest characters are? We easily see them get into universal to multiversal range, with in my opinion, the stronger characters hovering at around 5D, Onaga, and beings like that possibly going beyond that with feats they've done in the void beyond all reality, space, and time. It's a stronger verse than people give credit for. And if you guys want to see a scale of it, where I consider all the crossover beings they have, and we use scaling from their universes as well, I can do that. But you would, let's say like 500 likes. 500 likes, I'll cover that. I'll cover other aspects of the Mortal Kombat universe, like the Amulet of Shinnok, a bunch of things that are overpowered in the verse. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this breakdown of the big bosses of Mortal Kombat, the strongest characters, the top tiers. And let me know if you enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope to see you later. Shout out to Goon Nation. I'll see you all later. Peace.